Hey, so this is Wildman Technology and Fabrications vlog entry number two. Some of you might have noticed I changed the name. It was Wildman Technology Services, but nobody got the idea that I also did fabrication. So I changed the name of the place. It's Wildman Technology and Fabrication. Uh, my name's Marsh, and uh, every uh, once in a while I'll do these vlog entries to give you an insight into me and what I'm about. And uh, uh, today I want to tell you about a class I took tonight. It was called Making Your Art Into a Business. Well, I, I've got no illusions about this. What I do is my business. This, this fabrication shop here is what I do for a living. And I'm hoping to incorporate YouTube videos as part of what I do for a living. So I make this content, put it out there, and eventually, hopefully, some of you folks will like it and start to start to follow me. Um, so tonight, I, I saw I went to a class held by a fellow by the name of Mike Johnston, and if you uh, look up uh, Mike Johnston drummer, not Mike Johnston the other guy because the other guy he was weird. But if you look up Mike Johnston, drummer, you will find an incredible success story. This guy's dad told him, well, when he, when he went to his dad at age 18 and said, Dad, I want to be a drummer, his dad said the family is not going to like this. But I'll tell you what, I will run interference with the family. You just make sure that everything you do is about drumming. He didn't really understand that, but then his dad explained. Drumming is more than just about playing the drums. If everything you do is about drumming, there's selling drums, there's tuning drums, there's making drums, there's playing drums, there's teaching drums. The number of ways you can be involved with a single activity just goes on and on and on, and that was really enlightening to me. And the guy's a really good drummer too. Um, everybody there asked me, are you a drummer? And No, I'm not a drummer. I showed up because the title of the class was Make Your Art a Business. And the fella gave such good insights. And I'm going to play them for you right now because I recorded the best parts of what he talked about. And I also recorded some of his drumming. What's going on around here before I get to Mike? I haven't put out anything in a couple of weeks because I got so much work going on. I have an architectural feature that I'm making for someone. I had two commissioned art pieces that people wanted to build that I had to get out of the way. I have the belt grinder project where I'm converting one side of an old grinder into a belt grinder using modern grinding belt and some modern hardware. And I have the chop section and refinishing of the table that's going to hold the milling machine. All this came together at once. I'm so sorry I haven't been able to get some video out for you folks. But I hope this information that I give you right now from Mike, for those of you who are entrepreneurs and looking to build a business, this is really inspiring information and, and I hope you get something great out of it. Links to Mike's information will be down below in the doobly-doo. And uh, we'll see you guys hopefully within about a week with something really good. So I would tell my students, okay, I can't be here for your lesson tomorrow, but I'm going to film it on a video recorder, which was very new to me. And I'm going to put it on this thing called www.youtube.com. And the parents were like, is it, is it a bad site for my child? I'm like, no, it's like... It's me teaching drums and a bunch of cats farting. That's all it is. And I'm like, okay, fine. So, and that's really what it was. It wasn't what you think of YouTube. YouTube at the time was hosting. Where do you host your videos? Where can you upload a video for free? YouTube. That was it. It wasn't for the public. There were no YouTube stars. There, was, there were no followers. There was nothing to be gained from it. So I would put my students' videos up on YouTube, and I just lucked out. The timing was there. I ended up being the first real drum teacher on YouTube. But I didn't mean to do it, I just was doing it, and then I would say, okay, well I showed it to 10 students, there should be 10 views. When I get back from this little tiny short tour, I'd come back and instead of 10 views, there were 10,000 views. And I was like, why the hell would anyone want to watch a drum lesson on their computer? That's, that's a terrible idea. 
You're not even in the room with me. Like, and then it had 20,000 views, then 50,000 views, then 60, then 100,000 views, then a million views, then 40,000 followers, then 100,000 followers. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Why would anybody care? But they do care. So this is the moment to act. And so I started thinking like, well, that video has 100,000 views. If I had a dollar for all those views, that'd be $100,000, that'd be a good day. We should do that. So this is where the entrepreneur side starts to kick in. And you need to be aware of these moments in your life where things are starting to happen around you. You have to zoom out and look down on the entire situation. This is Mike teaching drums. There's this website called YouTube. He's got students, but he only has 60 students in person, but he has 100,000 followers in the virtual world. And when you zoom out and you look at it, you think like, there's gotta be something I can do here. It doesn't matter that I didn't go to business school. It doesn't matter that I'm an artist. Why can't I take control of my life? 1.4 of the workforce is artists. 80% of those live in California or New York. So the middle of the country that you wanna to move to, like, oh, if I just lived in Wyoming, nope, nah, you're good. You can stay here, this is fine. Now, here's the crazy thing. If 1.4 of the workforce is artists, what are the rest? They're not artists. How does a non-artist identify themselves creatively through your art. That is the whole point of not being an artist. It, well, what bands do you listen to? That's how they identify themselves. They don't make art, they buy art, and they hang it on their wall, and that's how they identify themselves as being creative. They're buying your art. They're listening to your drumming. They're listening to your album. They're telling their friends, I'm a huge fan of. That's their identification. My identification now is that I'm an educator, I'm a drummer. But somebody that's not an artist, they don't have that passion that we have, so they identify themselves through your art. So it's always needed. There's never a time, no matter what happens with the internet, I'm getting fired up, sorry. There's never a time where art isn't needed. I promise you that. That's never happened in the history of human civilization. So why do you think it would happen now? It hasn't happened now. There's 98.6, the math is killing tonight, 98.6% of the American workforce that is not an artist. So they're gonna buy your art but you have to put it out there. You have to not give up on yourself. You have to just say, you know what? This is what makes me happy. I put a huge value on happiness, a financial value on happiness. I remember my wife and I, it was Honda Civic, one bedroom apartment, health insurance. If I can have that, I'll, I'll do it. Sign me up, I'm good. Anything after that is, is a cherry on top. You know, and that was all I wanted. I just wanted to pay for my life with my art. And my art by that time wasn't drumming, my art was teaching. So whatever your art is, it doesn't have to be so black and white. It doesn't have to be like, well, you have to, if you're a painter, you have to be in a gallery. Why? What if, what if you just really enjoyed interior design and you just made people's houses look fantastic? Isn't that art? Isn't, isn't somebody that's not artistic that walks in their house and loves what they see? Didn't you do your job? So what does it matter? Your dream is your dream, all right? So I hope tonight you just realize like, I think I'm just gonna tackle this freaking world. It's like, you should. And I promise you, I'll be your big brother the whole way. I'll be behind you because no matter how successful you are, Bo, at being a drummer, you will never encroach on my success. So why wouldn't I be happy for you? All of you guys that are my students that I've seen before and taught lessons to, I wasn't teaching you to make money. I was teaching you because I want you to be great. Because if you were great, I, I get the freaking credit for it. Like, I know that dude, like I taught that kid. Like, ugh. Dude, I, Devin, what was uh, Ricardo? He was on America's Got Talent last night? Yes. Yeah, so I have an online student that played three songs on America's Got Talent. And then two days ago, Amber and I were watching, uh, what's that show in the morning? Good Day? Today, the Today Show. And I got another student that played on that. And it's like, oh, that's why I do this. I didn't get any money from the Today Show. It's just like, I just got to see Tyler play on the Today Show. I got to see Ricardo play on, you know, America's Got Talent. So, whatever your dream is, do it. So, I had to figure out how to make a living. I went back to my dad's talk. Tune them, tech them, sell them, do whatever you have to do. So I, I learned that by combining income, you can make one great income. And I know this isn't news to you, but sometimes it needs to be reinforced. So you're like, you know what? The fourth time I heard that, I finally clicked. I gotta do that. So I started teaching. So let's say, let's put you in this position instead of thinking about me. I'll just kind of tell you what I did through the story of you. So Tim, how old are you now? 19. So 19 years old. So Tim needs to get, let's see, 
Maybe we could get you to 2,500 a month. Is that cool? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I know you're not balling, <laughs> not course level yet, but yeah. it's not, you know, you can pay for rent and maybe dental insurance. You have to choose dental or health. It's up to you, buddy. Oh, man. Um, but I'll let you make that choice later. So Tim needs to get 2,500 a month. So let's start by adding things up. We're gonna have him teach. How long have you been playing drums? About six years. Six years, and you're, I know Tim very well. He's studied with me privately. He's a very good drummer. He could easily teach. When you think like, but I can't teach. I've only been playing for six years, or I suck. That's not how it works. Teaching is all about the distance between you and the student. So for somebody that's been playing for six years, he is light years past a beginning student that's never even touched sticks. It's all about the distance. Now, at some point, a student will come to him that is very good, and he has to be responsible enough to say, look, I can't teach you anything, but I do know all these other drummers in town. I'm gonna hand you off to Sticks. I'm gonna hand you off to Devin. I know the cats in town. That's fine, but he can definitely teach. So let's give him 10 students a week. 10 students a week at half hour lessons. It's only five hours a week. That's not a lot of time out of his day. So five hours a week, we're gonna have him teach on Monday. It's a school day. Kids get out of school 2.30ish, so he's gonna teach from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's his five hour shift. In that time, he's gonna charge $100 a month for lessons. These are half hour lessons. $25 per lesson, get the fifth one free, if there's five of the Mondays in the month. So that gives him $1,000 a month, and he's only teaching five hours a week. Now we need to give him more money, because we are not at 2,500 yet. So let's get him a job at his local music store. So you have a guitar center to choose from, Skip's Music, um, what else is out there? Good. Yeah, there we go. That's it. <laughs> Music's booming. Yeah. <laughs> so GC or Skip's. Now, that's a huge thing. There's a whole bunch of things that happen once you start working at a store. Now, keep in mind, guys, if you're like an artist, if you're a painter, all you gotta do is just switch out skips for Aaron Brothers. It all, it's the same thing. I promise you it's the same thing. Um, okay, so we're gonna put him at skips. Let's do, okay, minimum wage is $10 an hour right now, I believe. The California minimum wage is $10 an hour. Uh, we're not gonna deal with taxes. You're a drummer, you can avoid them completely. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Especially a little girl that's asleep on your mom's lap. Taxes are important. They will come for you. Uh, so, $10 an hour. Um, so we'll give you, I don't know, what's a, a normal work day? Eight hours, right? So 80 bucks a day before taxes. And we'll do three days a week. So you'll work uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because we need to leave the, the weekends open for gigs, because he's an artist. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, you work at Skips Music, it's part-time. So that's giving you now 240 a week. So uh, I should have done all this math earlier, 480, and then times two is eight, 960. 960 a month, oh, you can clap, that was pretty badass. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so, uh, so now we have 1,000 from teaching, 960 from working at Skips Music, but here's what I said about that. That changes everything for him. While working at Sips Music, he's working at the counter, the drum counter. Everyone that needs a drummer is gonna go straight to Skips. Hey, do you know anybody that can play on Wednesday or on Thursday or on Friday? I've got this country gig, pays 250. Tim's at the counter. Yeah, I can do it, perfect. He also gets discounts on all of the gear that he has to buy with the money he's making. If you guys don't know, this is one pair of drumsticks. I go through four pairs of these per rock band rehearsal. Any rock band I'm in, I probably go through four pairs a night. These are $10 a pair. Every time I rehearse, it's $40, just for sticks. The heads are about, if I have to replace the heads, you're looking at about 60 bucks. Crack this, $400. Crack that, 280. Crack those, 360. This is really expensive. So is any kind of art. Art is expensive. Now he gets 50% off, 40% off of everything he would ever buy. That is huge. So he has disc, he's technically endorsed by every company that makes anything. And if he's a little bit, Gray, he goes in and buys everything for his guitar player and his bass player too. He's like, oh, I just took up guitar. Let me get the strings for my guitar player. I just took up bass. Let me get 10 packs of strings. So now he's making money while saving money at this place. So we've got him at 1960 a month. That's two sources of income. We'll give you a third. You're a professional musician, so you're gonna gig. We're gonna put you in a cover band, because right now cover bands are the only ones that pay, unfortunately. I wish original music paid more in Sacramento, but it doesn't a lot. So cover band, a cover band is how you can pay for yourself to play original music. You gotta do what you gotta do. Back in the day, it was jazz. Right now, it's actually country. So you're gonna play in a country band. Suck it up, kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not my jam either, but you gotta suck it up and do it. Um, luckily, country right now is just pop. It's, it's, it's yeah. easy. So, 
let's give you two gigs a week and I'm gonna pay you 150 per gig. I'll pay you 100, just, just in case it's a, it's a low paying country gig. So 100 per gig and you're gonna do Fridays and Saturdays. Those are your gig nights. So you're gonna gig twice a week and that, that takes up your whole night. That's why we had to leave it open. You guys, if you aren't musicians, you just see this drum set here, but you don't know that I got here at 4.45 today to set this up. So we have to leave the whole day open for him to drive to Merced to set up come home at two in the morning, hate his life all day Sunday, and then get back to it on Monday. So, you won't hate your life, you'll love it. Yeah. But if you are gonna be really tired. Yeah. So, uh, we're giving him 200 a, a week for that, so that's 800 a month, so we had him at uh, 1960, so that puts him at, what, 2760? I could've gotten a C in math, I just didn't apply myself. You were right, Mom, I never applied myself. So, we've got him at 2760 now, and he's not working that much. He works three days in a music store. He teaches for one day, which is awesome because when you teach, you learn so much about your own playing because you're sitting there breaking things down for somebody else and then you're realizing, yeah, I should totally do that. That is how time signatures work, now I get it. So, and then he's gigging, which is getting him better. Cover band, are you kidding? Like, whoever wants to make fun of it, go for it, but you're learning the greatest songs ever recorded. You're in the moment of, how did Steve Gadd play the song with Paul Simon? So you're, you're, you're fellowshipping with the masters when you're in a cover band. So I think it's actually a really commendable thing. I think it's a great thing to be in a cover band. And we've left Sundays open for him to have a day off. He needs to practice. If he doesn't practice, he's not going to keep this going. So Sundays are his main practice day. Obviously, he doesn't teach on Monday until 3 p.m. so he can practice all day. And he's getting off probably, at, I'd say 6 p.m. to skip. So he has the nights to practice too on Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we've got him at 2960, but we can still find even more room in there. Maybe he puts the feelers out to the local studios in town. I'm really good at tuning drums. And drummers that come into studios generally don't know how to tune their drums, which makes your studio sound bad. So I'll come in for $50 and just Tech the drums, I'll tune them, I'll make them. You tell me what you wish they sounded like. I wish they sounded like Steely Dan. Boom, gaff tape everywhere. Got it, Steely Dan, <laughs> done. Easy, you know. I wish it sounded like Phil Collins. Boom, take off the bottom head. Shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, doom, doom. Perfect. Learn how to tune drums. Now, yeah, it's 50 bucks. Maybe you do it once a month. So, now we've got them, where are we at, like three grand now? With that 50, 29.90. So, but that's not why you tech. You don't tech for the 50 bucks. You tech because you get to sit in a studio with a producer that here, when he says, all right, give me the full kit, and you don't shed, and you don't play a bunch of fills, but you play the fattest groove ever, and he goes, dude, are you available on Thursday for this R&B thing I have? And you go, yeah, I could do it. Now you have a new gig, now you're a session drummer. So that's what, it's about networking. It's about a band coming in, and they say, ah, we need a drummer for this track, and the producer's like, oh, the guy that texts here, he's actually a really solid drummer. He'll probably do it for 100 bucks per song. Boom, let's do it out. 12 songs, $1,200. So the way to make a living at music or any art form is to combine, combine income, combine income, combine income, and then it makes one income called I am a professional musician.